One can make an argument and say that he's the Master Roshi of the show. Seems like every shonen anime has to have at least one of these type characters that just love women more over the top than others do. Everybody pretty much knows about the legendary ninja Naruto. I mean, the show's called Naruto, right? He's one of the many super ninjas. Naruto's actually considered a god tier ninja. But did you know there was like mentors he had that kind of helped him on his journey to becoming a great ninja? One of them being known as Kakashi. He was an extremely high ranking ninja. Even in the beginning part of the series, he was like one step below Akage, which is pretty much the leader of the whole village and let you know how strong the ninja is and how talented they are and he was already pretty top tier but even kakashi he became hokage at one point well earned because he was joining for majority of the series that we knew him right but did you know other than kakashi one of his main mentors naruto had another ninja mentor of course naruto isn't the first ninja ever so even before his era there was other ninja eras you might know Orochimaru. He's a part of the legendary signing along with Jiraiya and Tsunade. It's because of a cases like this with the last three standing. They was very strong. And that's why they were named the legendary signing. Oh yeah, let's talk about Jiraiya. He's a very strong ninja I decided to go over today. And he's one of the Naruto's mentors to help him in training. But how strong is Jiraiya? Pretty much every ninja is unique in their own way. Jiraiya is no exception to this. Ninjas in this universe kind of seem like magicians because there's a lot of different ways they can attack you. There's this primary inner energy that all ninjas in this universe have. They have to use this inner energy with ninja training to unleash powerful attacks, amplify themselves in different ways. Some things you can learn and then some things you're born with, things like kicking and kai's. Jiraiya is a really experienced ninja and he's been doing this for a while so he has good chakra manipulation and a lot of different techniques like being able to manipulate the chakra to literally stand on water since these beings can control energy or these ninjas can control energy he has energy manipulative type of attacks one could say blast power type of attacks like the rasengan for example is one of these chakra based energy manipulative attacks even big big versions of the rasengan blast power type stuff look how small he looks in comparison to it yeah i know jiraiya looks weird in this situation but on top of ninja magic stuff blast power type stuff he can do techniques known as genjutsu illusion stuff that messes with your mind type stuff ninja trickery type stuff he can also do that if he just has to since jiraiya is known as the toad sage he has a lot of abilities or techniques that has frog like qualities to it he has attacks like this that allow him to spew oil jutsu he can create chakra infused mud to trap beings and make them stick you know jiraiya being the toad sage and all he has to summon you know ninjas when they make a pact with certain creatures they can you know summon them at will or teleport them to help them fight in battle and stuff it would only make sense that jiraiya has a whole bunch of toads that he made packs with that can help him fight giant creatures you know I mean, he has toads of all different shapes and sizes, smaller ones, bigger ones that he can even combine jutsu with to help their attacks be more magnified. Sometimes he will summon his summon just to crush another big summon. <laughs> he can summon toads that can keep secrets real good. He got a lot of toad buddies that he can summon, get in contact with, and give important information. He had a frog that was apparently disguised as a store. As you can see, the two parts look like eyes, and you see how it starts to morph. The bad guys that he caught in this situation was like, where the heck are we? He said, you're inside the belly of my frog. On top of the summoning type style jutsu, he can do a summoning that traps everybody in the toad mouth. Like what? Being swallowed by the rock dwelling giant toad. If all this frog stuff wasn't too much for you, guess what he can do? He can transform beings into an actual frog. One can say he can actually hide inside of a frog and travel that way. Yeah. Believe it or not, if all of this wasn't enough for you, he has a base form. He has another frog-like form. It's called Sage Mode, which powers him up in every statistic possible is way greater than before. He even has physical appearance changes. Because like every ninja, he had to go through special training to earn this transformation. Jiraiya, just like most characters in the Naruto-verse, went through his fair share of evolution. But since the show's not his show, we don't see all of his evolution happen on screen in real time. More so, we get flashbacks to see stuff that he did go through here and there. Over the years, off-screen training that he gets, somewhere through his training, he gets this sage mode power up. The longer this video goes on, the more you're going to probably get more respect for Jiraiya and his love for toads. <laughs> Let me stop. It's about balancing spiritual energy, physical stamina, nature's power. He can add in nature's energy to the mix to keep these different energies balanced. And when you somewhat get an understanding of this, that's how you can enter stage mode. But if you do too much, you'll just turn into a frog. But if you can't use enough of the energy, you can't use none of the hermit style arts. The new techniques you get when you're in stage mode, you can't even use it. So it's like you got to be in a decent balance. Just to give you a physical idea of how strong he gets. I mean, look at this big old toad he's on, right? When he transforms into this new form, despite this toad being really strong and a good fighter, knocking away these other big summons, he tells his summon that he's on to go home. So he unsummons them and transforms into the state to really show how much his physicals has improved. 
Despite this thing being way bigger than him, looks like it has to be over hundreds or even close to 500 tons. Jiraiya just sends it flying with one attack. And this is the Sage Mode. On top of this, he has Toads to help him out in this transformation as well. More frog-like stuff. You know the technique Naruto always does? Making Shadow Clones? Jiraiya can technically do this as well. It's weird to think that he can do Shadow Clones, but he doesn't spam it more. <laughs> He can do other trickery stuff like look like other people, but then when it jigs up, he can turn back to normal. He knows techniques to where he can make protection barriers to where he can sense whatever reaches in the bubble. Techniques like this help him not be caught off guard. He knows sealing type of techniques. You can see the process of how he does it right here, sealing jutsu. I mean, you know he's knowledgeable about seals because you know Naruto has like the fox inside of him and stuff. He's able to unseal stuff and seal up stuff pretty well. His defensive type of counters is pretty cool, like how he was wrapped up in all this paper. He was kind of able to counter it by kind of looking like he went into the ground itself. It's called Toe Subjugation Art of the Manipulated Shadow. He was pretty much able to go flat like paper to get free. And we're talking about his blast power. He can manipulate fire, even fire style flame bombs, for example, here. One of his many offensive tools. He has chakra manipulative techniques. One could say to add to his durability, like infusing his hair with chakra to make his hair really hard. He can protect his whole body with stuff like this. One can make an argument that this is a form of offense and defense at the same time, because when you kick him, the spikes of it actually hurt the person that's kicking. You see Jirai using his hair to entangle beings right here. He has hair techniques called Art of the Raging Lion's Mane. To where he basically attacking him right here. Just straight up overwhelming beings with his hair. Like he quite literally, one can say make his hair into like a literal lion. To chase one of the pain bodies down in this particular occasion. And just casually having a conversation while his hair is just super long like this. It's good that you know he has a base form. He has a sage mode, a higher form. Because on top of being powered up like ever before, he has two frogs that help him fight and gather energy for him, which is why you see his appearance look a lot funkier. As you can see this example of how even one of the pain bodies in this situation said fast. It's kind of hard to get a reading of his speed. We didn't really get many flashy showings on how fast he is, but we know he's not slow, at least in sage mode. The only way I can think of analyzing his speed is to analyze what kid like ninja can do. And he's way above like the kid like ninja, at least when it comes to fighting speed. Well, majority of the kid like ninja, like even a kid Tamari can react to things moving at the speed of sound. So if I had to make an estimation on Jiraiya's speed, I would say he's at least as fast or way faster than this in sage mode to be able to react to stuff way faster than sound at the very least but that could be just me overthinking what do y'all think about Jiraiya's speed imply they can lift up big stuff like this despite them being small in comparison then they have blast from this other frog for example that's shown to be able to slice stuff if needed if you want to get an idea of his, of his physicals in sage mode like i already showed he kicks one of the pain bodies and they go flying that far to show his kicking power or striking power in general on top of his raw punches and speed and everything being increased, he can do extra blasts when all three are basically working together to combine their blasts. When they combine, it's called Bath of Boiling Oil. This is the shot I showed you earlier of the giant Rasengan, a way better version since he's in Sage mode. And when it comes to his hair stuff that I showed already, he has a better version here where he shoots a lot, a lot of spikes from his hair. But in this occasion, they blocked it, but you can see how many he shot out. When it comes to his blast power, he will mix in his Genjutsu to let you win, and then he would just blast you with fire style stuff that's significantly more amplified than before. Like I showed earlier, everything is magnified when in Sage mode. You can see the radius it takes up, and this. I'm going to mention it later on in the video, but Jiraiya actually gets a clone in the newer stuff but don't ask when it comes to fire style jutsu in this clone he can actually in his sage mode can actually imbue his fist with fiery punches yeah so he doesn't just have to spit him from his mouth it kind of helps him be able to spam fire or punches in this clone version of himself which i'm gonna speak on later on but yeah let's not talk about this right now though when it comes to the topic of speed he doesn't have that many showings but there is implications that he's pretty fast even though he doesn't have that many showings because there was an occasion when he was fighting the pains and he was trying to summon he just straight up blitzed this entity not giving him a chance to summon also showing his striking power to do all this to the concrete after a strike since unfortunately he's one of those characters that didn't last long in the series he does lack screen time but a good way to understand his strength is to understand naruto's sage mode strength even though naruto technically did master it and his version of sage mode is better than jiraiya's we could kind of get some type of idea of jiraiya's strength based on his feats because they have similar modes but since jiraiya's face looks more frog-like it's obviously not as perfected as naruto's was 
I mean, when it comes to his physicals, we know he's ridiculously strong based on his kicking power. You see this big summon that, you know, one of Payne's creatures right here, for example. A good way to understand his Sage Mode, let's just assume his Sage Mode is like 50% of Naruto's. For him to be able to transform into Sage Mode and to be able to send something this big flying in the air with his strength, it kind of reminds me of that time Naruto did something similar to one of Payne's summons and naruto sage mode can just use his physical strength to sling it in the air that far it's one thing lifting up something that heavy but there's one thing to throw it that high in the air when you add all these factors together and you add on the fact that jiraiya actually launched his big share of beast in the air as well a good estimation is that in sage mode he can definitely lift over a thousand tons i mean think about it even a bootleg naruto in sage mode could do crazy stuff like lifting up this big old junk for example one way you can look at how strong he is is to compare him to Tsunade and orochimaru who are the legendary sign in he should be somewhere comparable to their might even though they're all strong in their own different ways when we talk about handbooks or data books they even just straight up say it that he's up there with Orochimaru don't forget that Orochimaru is not only basically a snake ninja he's one of them weird people because his body is very squishy when it comes to taking damage because he took direct punches from Tsunade who has chakra enhanced strength that can cause crazy devastation Orochimaru's even gotten an entanglement with Naruto when he was cloaked four tails cloak mode in this occasion he was at least able to stagger the four tails the fact that orochimaru can do this to a tail beast cloak form right despite all of this jiraiya can shield from orochimaru with his hair manipulative chakra enhancing type of abilities and when it comes to these three it stated during this time period of course that in order for any of these three to beat each other another one of the trio these three would have to be the one to beat each other in order to stop orochimaru it would take the help of another signing to take him on. But on top of all of this, when we're talking about his pure destructive capacity in Sage Mode, we know at the very least his blast power can level a mountain at the very least. When he was in Sage Mode and did a massive scene guy like this, it was confirmed via lore writer intent or data books that it could easily carve away a mountain. That's how much blast power this Racine guy, this massive one, can produce. So with his blast power, he can delete mountains. That's the level of destructive capacity these signing has. What I don't want to do is try to act like he can punch as hard as Tsunade just because they're confirmed to be comparable in power when they're both strong in different ways. I'm not going to be unfair like that. What I will do is, though, is acknowledge that Tsunade can enhance her punches by concentrating her chakra and her fists and stuff like that, right? She has chakra enhanced strength, right? Like, Jiraiya is strong in different ways, like Genjutsu, producing Rasengan, Blast, energy projective type of ways, not necessarily punching, though. Since we know they're strong in their different ways and they're confirmed to be comparable to each other, like I've shown proof of that in this video, what if we compare how hard she can hit versus how hard Jiraiya can blast with his energy projective Rasengan blast and stuff? Wouldn't that be more of a fair comparison, right? Like, I get it. Tsunade got more screen time. We've seen her do more flashy stuff in the wars but who's to say if Jiraiya wasn't still alive he wouldn't be able to do a lot of similar stuff with his different Rasengan blasts and stuff like how she was able to crack this baby version of Madara Susano with her striking power do you think Jiraiya could use his energy blast and crack his Susano as well if he was in the same situation if he was alive this baby version of Susano not trying to say he's up there with Madara or nothing but I'm talking about this baby version of his Susano he was using you got super powerful tail beasts like the Ten Tails for example Madara Susano can withstand beings that can create its own tornadoes and create blasts similar to a nuclear bomb like on some city destruction type stuff Madara Susano can withstand all that with his Susano ribcage baby form of Susano so for Tsunade to do this to moderate Susano is actually no easy feat considering how much these Susanos can withstand. I know this is a pure assumption, but if we're to assume that if Jirai was in the same situation, he could possibly crack it too, since he was considered on her tier, one of the legendary signings, that would be a fair assumption. If we could assume he would do this, that would mean that Jirai as well can level a mountain or multiple mountains, if we're being honest. If we assume he can do this without his sage mode, if you don't want to say his base form could do something like this, I guess it's more safe to say that his sage mode could do this if Tsunade can do this, if but who's to really know? We didn't really see him in this situation. I think this is a good, fair assumption, though. I mean, it's already confirmed that Jiraiya can carve away mountains or a mountain. I would definitely say it's fair to say we could assume maybe he could do more. Like how somebody he's comparable to can do more, like cracking a Susano from Madara. Somebody that can withstand mountain shattering attacks on a daily with his Susano. There's a chance that he could be able to tremble an entire island or at least carve a piece of it, split it down the middle, or even maybe destroy an entire island. But we just wouldn't ever know, obviously. What do you think, though? Do you think he can tremble multiple mountains in his base state with a Rasengan or carve a couple away with a giant one? 
What do you think he could carve away with a giant Rasengan with a single attack? What's the limits on how big of a giant Rasengan he can make in his base state? Do you think he can make a ginormous Rasengan in his base? Or do you think this is only exclusive to his Sage Mode? Do you think a giant Rasengan from Sage Mode Jiraiya could knock out a Tail Beast Cold? I want to hear your thoughts below though. One can say his defense is similar because he got punched by Rochimaru via his hair manipulation or an, and shielding. He can shield from overpowered beings that are on his level like a Rochimaru and stuff who should be similar in power even if he has the edge is not by mud you remember in the early days when naruto had like his modes where he would look like this when he would go berserk and couldn't control himself i would say in sage mode if naruto was to get cloaked with one tail i would say jiraiya at sage mode has a good chance of beating him like this or even maybe like this on stages like this is where it's up for debate because this starts getting confusing because even though pain had defeated jiraiya pain did straight up say if he didn't have the secret he had he wouldn't have won against jiraiya Payne pretty much admitted that if he actually knew everything there was to know at the Renegon, then Jiraiya probably would have won. Let you know his battle IQ and let you know how intelligent and how Jiraiya can improvise during battle. Keeping that secret was key for Payne winning. I mean, what Payne said kind of seems accurate because he did seem to get the advantage over these three different pain paths or bodies. This is before he knew he had all these different bodies. If these were all the bodies right here, technically Jiraiya would have won because he trapped them in a Genjutsu to leave them vulnerable to attack and stuff mind stuff then leaving him defenseless while they was trapped in a genjutsu it just sucks he had to actually fight his former student i'm curious i want to hear you guys' thoughts on this since we know jiraiya didn't get a chance to do this feat we've seen characters like Tsunade against madara in this particular occasion kick this hard and break his ribcage suzano type thing we know they're stronger in different ways she's strong because of her chakra enhancing her blows at the point of impact but jiraiya is strong physically because of sage mode amping him up do you think jiraiya's defenses could stand up you know to her kicking power i would like to see that but we didn't get to see jiraiya do stuff like that i mean because we know she can level mountains too with her kicking power so or with her punching power chakra enhanced strength you know what i mean it's also cases like this how these three are left on the battlefield they are acknowledged to be very strong and this is where they are dubbed the legendary sanin or the great shinobi of konoha when they was younger implying these three have a similar rank or a similar threat level or one could say power level it depends on how you interpret it you're probably thinking jiraiya isn't that strong he's only strong when you look at the early part of the naruto series nah he's still strong even in later stuff because when it comes to power standards during the later sagas during this ido tente stuff kabuto and them talk about how jiraiya's body or dead corpse could be useful this implies that them statements about itachi one can say was true stuff about Itachi and Jiraiya might be strong enough to kill each other because if they was considering bringing Jiraiya back like he was a valuable asset I let you know that he's just strong and statements like this that you probably don't think should count since it's in the beginning part of the series these statements like this do matter indeed notice how confident Jiraiya sounds when he's talking to Kisami and Itachi about how he's going to take them on talking about he's confident about taking them out eyeing by his hand so later on in Naruto in Boruto the saga stuff or power levels start getting kind of absurd I mean you know in the middle of Shippuden he ends up getting this golden form where he becomes one with Kurama and stuff Naruto ends up getting the ability to fuse his Kurama mode or tail beast mode with his sage mode he ends up getting sage of six path level power you know sage of six paths level beings can create the, a literal moon sized structure by pulling bedrock from the earth can fight sage of six past level beings that have enough energy to cut the moon in half and naruto's durability at this time with chakra sage mode and all this crazy stuff can withstand being in the middle of a slice that slices through the entirety of the moon structures like this it was revealed there was a, like a whole bunch of Sage of Six Paths level beings, not just the Sage of Six Paths, but it's an entire clan, including him having a mother and a whole bunch of other godlike beings that are on similar levels of power or higher. In the Boruto sequel series, these type of beings are like a constant thing that pops up. Naruto is at least on the level of the Sage of Six Paths, the mother. Then there's even beings higher than her, like Ishiki, for example. Tell me why in the newer stuff, there's literally a clone of Jiraiya who also has a base form and a Sage mode. Look how his version of Sage mode looks. At this point, moon busting or one can even argue planet busting is like a normal thing now for beings in this tier because there's a whole bunch of Sage of Six Paths level beings walking around nowadays and this clone of Jiraiya just took a straight up hit from him. But that's none of my business without dying, by the way. But I gotta admit, there's heavy implications that this being isn't really trying that hard against this clone of Jiraiya, so it's hard to really imply that he's on their level i'm not taking this too seriously but it's wild that he clashed blows with ishiki but yeah he was being casual and he wasn't really fighting that hard but this is still ridiculously cool to see the strength of this clone of jiraiya but yeah it's implied he's not on their level though one way you can understand this jiraiya clone's power is the fact that he felt like he could take on delta somebody that got in a little scuffle with a golden naruto 
who's literally godlike, <laughs> you know. But putting all that stuff aside, you got to respect Jiraiya, one of the legendary signings. How strong do you think he is? Do you think he deserves his respect? Wish he got a little bit more screen time, not going to lie. But before I get going, got to give a quick thanks to everybody that has donated to the channel. Helps out a lot. Respect Jiraiya. I'm glad you are enjoying your time on the channel. Make sure you check out the playlist on the channel to see other How Strong videos. If you like what this channel is offering, make sure you hit that subscribe button and I will see you guys later.